Good Brady. Well, good morning. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Yeah, welcome morning. to True Grace Bible Ministry. Uh, okay, my name is Mike Marcheski, and uh, welcome uh, you folks that are with us out there, and uh, for those that are here. Well, we're going to continue teaching the Word of God, rightly divided, as we uh, uh, as we do here. And what we'd like to talk about this morning is this middle wall of partition. Okay. Uh, lately, it's been causing a lot of uh, controversy, division, and it, it's been that way for years, so it's nothing really new. But the way it's been being teach now, being taught, excuse me, is I think causing much division within, uh, you know, the community of uh, grace believers. Uh, the middle wall of partition, as we're going to see, I believe is explained to us very simply in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 of who it's between. Okay. Now, I do not believe it's between what um, some teach as the, the Jews and the Greeks. There was one body of Christ, and then after a time, Paul went to all nations, and then both of these bodies make up the one new man. I, 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 don't, I don't agree with that, okay? I'm sorry, I can't accept that teaching. And the middle wall of partition, we're going to see, is simply what the Scripture says. It's between, in verse 11 of Ephesians 2. So, turn to Ephesians with me. Chapter 2. In verse 14. For he is our peace, peace, and has made both one, and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So this is what we're going to be talking about this morning, is this middle wall of partition. And before we get into the scriptures, okay, I'd like to give uh, maybe some historical facts about the temple that was built at that time. And there was a physical wall of partition that was built by man. Okay, It wasn't commanded by God in the scriptures, but the, the Jew of that day built a physical wall to keep the Gentiles out of the temple. And the Gentiles were allowed into the temple area. But there was a wall around it to keep them from going any further. And the place that they were allowed to go was called the court of the Gentiles. So Gentiles were present at that time. And the wall was built around. Okay? So, you know, some would call that the, the middle wall of partition. But biblically, I don't think that is what God is speaking about in Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to get into that in a moment, okay? But there was a literal wall there that kept the Gentiles out of the temple. And interesting, today, in your Jewish synagogues, there is still a partition that separates the Jew and the Gentile within the synagogue. It's still there today. They still do the same thing. Okay? So, it was there. It was a physical wall built. And if you get a chance, I know some of you, you know, on, on my Facebook page, uh, I posted a, um, a study on the wall of partition. Take a look at it. And I, I think it helps explain that physical wall that was built back then. And it was a literal wall. Uh, I want to read something here out of, out of that um, post from Facebook concerning this wall, okay? Uh, along top of this dividing wall, at regular intervals, were placed pillars bearing in Greek an inscription to the effect that no stranger was on the pain of death to pass from the court of the Gentiles into that of the Jews. At the entrance to a graveyard at the northwest angle of the harem, the harem wall, a stone was discovered by M. Ganah in 1871. Built into the wall bearing the following inscription in Greek capitals, no stranger is to enter into within the partition wall and enclose around the sanctuary an enclosure around the sanctuary. Whoever is caught will be responsible to himself for his death 
which will ensue. So that wall that they built, if anybody went beyond it, they, they would kill them. And that was inscribed into this wall. That was their warning. So it was a literal wall that was built to keep the Gentiles out. So was there a physical wall? Yes. But is that the wall of partition that God is speaking of? I don't believe so. Okay? I just wanted to bring out some of those facts about that wall that was literally built by man. It was a man-made thing. And the petition that they have in the Jewish synagogues today is man-made. But the wall of partition we're going to see is the wall of partition that God put up, if you would, okay? And it wasn't a physical wall as we know it was back there in uh, Herod's temple. So now, let's come back to Ephesians 2. And let's take a look at the scriptures. And verse 11. It says, Wherefore, remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh, made by hands. I believe verse 11 tells us who this middle wall of partition is between. It's between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And who instituted this? Let's go back to Genesis 17. Genesis 17. In verse 10. In verse 10, This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So if you weren't of the seed of Israel, it meant you were, you were a Gentile. Okay? He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. So, here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. This is what Paul is referring to. So that middle wall of partition is between the circumcision and uncircumcision. That is how God distinguished between people in time past. And if they weren't circumcised, they would be cut off because they broke God's covenant. That's very simple. I, I could be able to stop the message right there. Because that's who the middle wall of partition is between. The circumcision and uncircumcision. It's very plain. It's very simple. Now, of course we're going to keep going, okay? Let's come back to Ephesians. Chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And as you go there, go back a couple pages to Romans chapter 9. Okay? Romans chapter 9. And, and what I want to do now is compare Romans chapter 9, verses 4 and 5, with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Okay? So, let's read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, At that time, in time past, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So, 
Keep a place here in Ephesians. Go back to Romans chapter 9. We're going to read verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My, I, not I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Remember what we just read there in Genesis chapter 17. It's about the flesh, isn't it? Okay? And even Ephesians 2.11 says, The circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That's a physical circumcision. Alright. Now, Romans chapter 9, verse 4. We're going to compare with what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 says. It says in verse 4, Who are Israelites? And if we go back to Ephesians 2.11, we see the Gentiles. We're making comparisons here, okay? Romans chapter 9. And verse, verse 4, it goes on to say, To whom pertaineth the adoption? Okay? The adoption had to do with the circumcision. Now, we come in again to Ephesians 2. We see the uncircumcision of the Gentiles. No adoption in time past. Back to Romans chapter 9. And look at verse 5. Where it says down here in verse 5. It says, Of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Now if we come back here into Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, At that time ye were without Christ. See the contrast? Now, again, back to Romans chapter 5. It says, Who are the fathers? Talking about it. Um, Israel here. Who, whose are the fathers? And if we come back into Ephesians, okay, and if we look in verse 12, it talks about we are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. There's a contrast there between them. Remember, in the flesh, circumcision, and the Gentile, the uncircumcision. Uh, back to Romans, in verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 4. And it talks of the covenants and the giving of the law. And now when we come back into Ephesians 2.12, it says we're strangers from the covenants of promise. These covenants were given to Israel. And now back to Romans 9, verse 4. And we see down here after that, it says, and the service of God. The service of of God. And we come into Ephesians chapter 2, having no hope and without God in the world. And back to uh, Romans again, chapter 9, in verse 4, it says that the service of God and the promises. See, Israel had promises, but what was the hope of uh, Gentiles? having no hope and without God in the world. That's verse 12. So, I wanted to bring those comparisons out to show the difference. Because remember what Paul says in Romans 9, in verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They're the circumcision. And that's what he's speaking of here, okay? And those promises that were given to Israel, the circumcision, and the condition of the Gentiles in time past. I hope you see the contrast there. That's what I wanted to show. That this middle wall of partition was between these groups. The circumcision and the uncircumcision. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now. 
That means there's a change. Okay? There's been a change. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Okay? But now, in Christ Jesus. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Sounds like they're having fun back there. Okay, if you heard them noises, that's uh, my wife and the grandkids back there. She's actually teaching them about Joseph uh, and reading the story of Joseph to them because here our local high school, which I find pretty amazing, is putting on a, um, a theatrical play about uh, Joseph and uh, the colors of his coat. And we're going to see that next week. So I think it's pretty cool that our, our high school is even doing that. So keep that in prayer. Okay, so now we're talking about Romans, or excuse me, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. In Christ Jesus. Look at what Galatians chapter 3 says. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, who have been identified with, been placed into Christ. No water. Look at verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither male, neither bond or free. I'm getting ahead of myself. There is neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. You know, but now, in Christ Jesus. See, we're, we're in Christ by faith. And I hope, hopefully you all know that, okay? But what, what, what drug me out all week is this, there is neither male nor female. And I, I thought about that all week long. Why does Paul put that in there? And I believe it has to do with this middle wall of partition that's been broken down. Because in time past, Okay, it was the men that were getting circumcised, the Jew, after eight days. And we see in Old Testament scripture that the man's wife and family did what the man did. And I believe they were put under the law too, as well, the women. Okay, because we, we see different things that they weren't allowed to do when they had their menstrual cycle and the blood and all that. Okay. So, the women followed the law as well, but they didn't get circumcised. But now, we see a change happening. The middle wall of partition between the circumcision and uncircumcision. Okay, yes, it's pretty much a generic term to Jew and Gentile, but even that circumcision that pertained to the man is done away with. Because in Galatians 5, Paul says the same thing here, okay? Uh, in verse 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh thy love. See, I believe this middle wall of partition is between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And the thing that I said caught me with the women here, neither male or female, we're all one in Christ. Because now the circumcision that we get is not made by hand but it's a spiritual circumcision from Colossians chapter 2. Okay? It's a spiritual circumcision. And today, women are spiritually circumcised. So that was just something I found interesting, and I think that goes hand in hand with what we're talking about, this middle wall of partition. Okay? Okay, back to Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to keep going. We read verse 13. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, and I believe that had to do with the Gentiles, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Remember in time past, we were without Christ, having no hope and without God in the world. That was the condition of Gentiles. In time past. We must remember that. But it's by the blood, isn't it? It's always been by the blood. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption 
through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Romans chapter 3. Verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. See, folks, it's the blood that needs to be applied to your account. Yes, God reconciled the world, and he's not imputing sins to your uh, account, okay? But that, that, that just means that the work's been done. You have to trust in that. And when you do, you have that redemption. You have forgiveness of sins. Okay? And you can be reconciled <laughs> to God on an individual basis. Okay? But it's by the blood that we've been brought on. And that's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, uh, 13 is talking about. So, <laughs> let's keep moving here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. For He is our peace. He's our <coughs> peace. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We now have access to God's grace. We've been justified freely by the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Back to Ephesians 2.14. <coughs> he is our peace, who has made both one. And the only ones we see here in Scripture is circumcision and uncircumcision. That's what he's speaking of. It can't be anybody else. And if you want to use a generic term, Jew and Gentile, fine. But it is definitely not those two body of Christ churches, the Jew and the Greek and then all, all others. It, 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 just, it just doesn't fit. You have to twist it to make it fit. Sorry. Okay? I just I can't agree with that. So he is our peace who has made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity. See, folks, there was always enmity, hostility, ill will, opposition between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Always. Let, let, let's go back to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17. And verse 26. It says to do with David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, verse 26. And David spoke to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And take away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? See, even that far back, there was the enmity between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Uh, come into Matthew. Matthew 15. Always enmity between those two groups. And I know some teach that the enmity was between you know the Jew and the Greek and then uh, the other body of Christ church, the two different groups, but I don't see any enmity in, in Colossians and, and, and uh, even Corinthians and those passages that those guys say. The enmity that was, even in the, during the book of Acts, was between the church at Jerusalem and the church, the body of Christ that Paul was building. That's what they were disputing over because the Jews were going out and saying that uh, these Gentiles now had to be circumcised and keep the law. That was where the hostility was. And that was circumcision and uncircumcision. Think about it, okay? Yes, the spiritual circumcision was coming in, but it was between that generic term, Jew and Gentile. So here we are in Matthew 15. And about the Canaanite woman. And then, let's just read it. And behold, 
a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried at him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take children's bread and cast it to dogs. See, even Jesus was calling these Gentiles dogs. And she said, The truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. See, it's interesting. This woman knew the scripture. She knew that Israel was to be a light unto the Gentiles. Go back and read um, Isaiah 42, Isaiah 49, Isaiah 59 in the beginning of Isaiah 60. Israel was to be a light unto these Gentiles. And I think she knew that. Okay, She knew her place as a dog. But see, there was hostility. Even if we come into Acts... Acts chapter 16, in verse 20. See, here we are, you know, Paul, in the marketplace, we'll, we'll go to verse 19. And it says, And when her master saw the hope or their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates. See, the ones out in the marketplace and the magistrates were Gentiles. These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. So here even the hostility between the magistrates and the rulers of the marketplace, the Gentiles, they're, they're having hostility with these Jews. So the enmity was always there between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, or again, the generic term, the Jew and the Gentile. It has always, always been there. And that's what Ephesians here is talking about in verse 15. Wait till you get back there. Ephesians um, 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Okay? There was always hostility there. Verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So, folks, there was always hostility between these groups. But let's jump back up in verse 15 here for a second, okay? Verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Folks, these ordinances are not the ones from Acts chapter 15, okay? The law contained in ordinances he's speaking of is the law itself. And we go back to Exodus, or, yep, Exodus 19. In verse 3, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thou, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagle's wing, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall become, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. See, back here now in Ephesians, when he's talking about having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that's what he's speaking of. He's speaking of that law system, if I may, that was given to the nation of Israel. That is exactly what he's talking about. Uh, look what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 
and we'll jump into verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day. Okay, Paul was circumcised the eighth day, just like that covenant we've seen back there in Genesis 17. Of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. The church he persecuted was the church at Jerusalem, the little flock church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless, but what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, in time past, Israel's righteousness came by keeping that law. And hence, that's why he had that animal sacrifices, because nobody could do it. Okay? But Paul says, And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Let's look at Romans chapter 3. Verse 20. It says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in the sight, in his sight, for the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. So, you see what Paul says here in Ephesians. This, he says, And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but now which is through the faith of Christ Jesus, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, now the righteousness of God is manifested, it's revealed, it's available to all, but it's only upon all of them that believe. See, he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. See, the law that Paul talks about there in... Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, is the law that was given back there in Mount Sinai. Let's, let's go all the way back to Deuteronomy once, okay? And look what Deuteronomy says about Israel's righteousness. Deuteronomy 6, 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And it shall be our righteousness if, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. See, those things have been abolished. That is what has been abolished in Christ's flesh. The redemptive work on the cross. Okay? Their righteousness no longer came through keeping that law, but by the faith of Christ Jesus. See, the King James Bible has it correct. It's the faith of Christ. His faithfulness of what he did. And that's what Paul says back here in Ephesians 3. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. For he became... He had, he was sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. We get God's righteousness put onto our account by our faith in Christ's faithfulness. Did you see that? But back to Ephesians, you know, He abolished that enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. That was the law, folks. It's not those ordinances from Acts chapter 15. For to make in himself twain, two, 
one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both circumcision, uncircumcision, Jew and Gentile, okay, unto God in one body. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. God reconciled the circumcision, uncircumcision, in this dispensation of grace. We're one body. There's no difference between Jew and Gentile today. In God's eyes, He only sees those in Christ. And we read the passage, whether it be Jew or Greek, bond or free, male or female. We're all one in Christ. There's no difference today. But in time past, God distinguished in the flesh. And if you weren't circumcised, what did we read back there? It, it, all the way back there in Genesis 17? If you weren't circumcised, what happened to the soul? Let me find it quick and I'll read it. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of the foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. They'd be broken off. Okay? But today it's not that way. Okay? We're not under those covenants today. Circumcision availeth nothing, but it's about being in Christ Jesus. And we get in Christ Jesus by the faith of Jesus Christ, by trusting the gospel of our salvation, that He died for us, was buried and rose again. Believe that and trust that. And then you receive the spiritual circumcision. We're placed into Christ. We're placed into the body of Christ, the church. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16. And that He might reconcile both in the one body by the cross. See, the cross work, the redemptive work, is what did all this. But it didn't happen at the cross because we know even in Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 7, it was still God extending mercy to the nation of Israel to accept their Messiah. Then they, were, they, they fell. Then they diminished away. We know that. But it was by the cross that all this happened. Not at the cross, okay? Not at, but by the cross. That he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. See, that's what 2 Corinthians was uh, saying. That's what we looked at last week about the reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And remember, if, if, if you did watch last week, we, I compared that to uh, Romans 11, in verse 15, where it says, For if the casting away of them, Israel, be the reconciling of the world. See, God had to cast Israel aside. He had to set them aside before He could reconcile the world into one body in this dispensation. That's the reconciling of the world. Okay? That uncircumcision and circumcision, Jew and Gentile, into one body. That God doesn't distinguish by the flesh anymore. And that passage in, in 2 Corinthians 5.16 about not knowing Christ after the flesh anymore. Okay? Christ was circumcised. Think about that, okay? Alright, let's wrap this up. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17. And came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. Remember the comparisons we did from Romans chapter 9, verses 4 and 5, with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Okay, the ones far off were, were, were the Gentiles. We had no were without Christ, having no hope without God in the world. Alright. Verse 18. For through him 
We both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Remember what I just read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13? For by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Look what Ephesians 2.18 says again. For through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Folks, the middle wall of partition was between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. God broke that down. There is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or female, we're all one in Christ. Circumcision availeth nothing. Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So folks, the middle wall of partition, once again, was between the uncircumcision and the circumcision. It's been abolished. Okay? For he is our peace. He has moved both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There's no enmity between circumcision and uncircumcision. In God's eyes. Of course, the man-made partitions are still there. Okay? But this middle wall of partition was between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Father, we thank you that the middle wall of partition has been broken down. And Lord, we thank you for the peace that we have with you. Give us understanding, Lord, that we may continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.